Hi guys, it's Jez here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. <laughs> this is a quick look at the Windows 10 Creators Update for the Xbox One which is heading out now to the public. You can force the update yourself by going to the settings menu and then going to system and then going to update. But if you're not ready to force the update yet, it is rolling out to tens of thousands of people every day as an automatic update. Um, quite a lot of stuff has changed primarily with navigation but also setting the groundwork for future features as well which we'll talk about in a minute but yeah let's get right into it and take a look at this latest update now the version I'm running here is on the alpha ring so expect some uh, this, this version might have a, few, a couple more features that aren't available to the public yet, and also there might be a bit of bugs here and there, um, but don't worry about those. Uh, the vast majority of the stuff in this build will be available to the public, and we're just going to have a quick look at those right now. The first thing you'll notice that we no longer get this active tile effect. Um, I don't know if that's to save system resources or something like that, but Microsoft has removed it completely. The, the current active game, or the most recent active uh, app or so, will appear at the top like this. And it gives you quick access to game hub, uh, clubs and looking for group that are relevant to the game and also content you may have recorded with game DVR for instant sharing. Now we still get the recent list as before, that hasn't changed a great deal. Um, also we get Beam in this build which I'll talk about a bit later and also pins are still here at the bottom as usual. Now obviously one of the other biggest features of this update is the new guide menu. You access this by tapping the Xbox button once on your controller and that has changed from the double tap from previous builds due to fan feedback. The new guide gives you instant access to the dashboard games and apps and the store and also the recently used games and apps that you've been playing on your console. It also gives you uh, an instant look at games with gold and also your pins which you can customise as before. Um, it's a much, much more efficient way to navigate the dashboard, and uh, I think most people will enjoy it. Also, when you've got a game ring, the new guide gives you instantaneous access to screenshot and record that using the Y and X buttons on your controller, but also this new game DVR menu by pressing the view key. That gives you instantaneous access to recording different lengths of time, and also a quick link to your captures. Now one of the other coolest things about the new guide is this new achievements menu that lets you get a quick look at the game score leaderboard at a glance. In addition to that though, it lets you track your achievements actively on screen using a new achievement tracker overlay. We believe that this feature will eventually be expanded to include other apps, leveraging the new Windows 10 Creators Update compact overlay mode which arrived for Windows 10 recently. But until then, it's restricted only to... Um, to uh, Beam Chat and also the achievements interface. You can choose where it appears on the screen like so, you can choose how many achievements it tracks and even the transparency which gives you quite a lot of control over how it looks. But once you've set it up, this is what it looks like on screen which is a very very handy feature indeed if you are so inclined to track your achievements. Now beyond the new guide and the new achievements menu, we've also seen some improvements to the party system as you can see here. It suggests to you looking for group ads that you might be interested in based on recent games and what clubs you're involved in, but it also lets you create looking for group ads instantaneously based on previous ones you've made. So if, you, if you're likely to create the same ad again, it lets you do that in a quickly and efficient way using this history button. Also, it lets you jump straight into the looking for group menu with a quick link right here and also lets you enter your own search criteria based on your history and what games you're interested in. So if we have a quick look for look for group ads for Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, you can see there are quite a few ads already, people looking for grind, uh, to grind the game and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. Now beyond that, not a great deal has changed. The messaging system is still largely the same as is the notifications menu, but the uh, the previous multitasking menu has been removed because as we know, snapping has been removed. 
Uh, Microsoft have done this to free up system resources, but also because apparently not many people are actually using it. And also, it was a pretty clunky solution to take up half of your screen with uh, a big blank bar for a lot of things. Uh, we do, As I mentioned earlier, we do believe that Microsoft are going to bring picture-in-picture -picture functionality back in the future, although it's not in the immediate roadmap, according to Xbox platform chief Mikey Barra. Instead of the multitasking menu, we now have instant access to Beam Broadcasting, as you can see here. Now, if you do want to broadcast a game on Beam, it uses the Microsoft credentials attached to your Xbox Live account, but you can head to beam.pro forward slash uh, your gamer tag to uh, set that up more definitively. As you can see here, it gives you uh, access to the broadcast overlay. Similarly to the achievement system, you can position the chat anywhere you like, which is a nice touch. Also, you can choose whether to include your microphone, your camera, chat, and also party audio, uh, which also people in your party have to agree to do that as well. You can set the broadcast title and also all of that cool stuff. And there are some advanced settings to look at if we just have a quick look here. So yeah, you can change the game and system volume and the mic volume as well, and also alter your video quality. Now, if we jump back to the main dashboard, as you can see, not a great deal of stuff has changed. If you go to the community tab in this current build that I'm running, you can filter the feed, which is a nice feature indeed. Uh, removing the popular now stuff, which is pretty annoying. So I'm going to do that right now. And as you can see, again, much more cleaner feed as a result. One guide is still the same as is the store. Not much has changed there either. All the games and apps and TV. Oh, and actually, we've got now a music menu and an accessories list, which I believe are pretty new, actually. So that's a nice touch. Now, one of the other cool features in this update is this new co-pilot setting, which lets you divide the buttons on your controller to a separate controller connected to your Xbox. This is very useful for some people with disabilities and other accessibility uh, problems, but... Uh, additionally, this could be a fun party trick uh, where, you, where you and a friend attempt to control a single player game using two controllers. I can see that being very cool on streams and stuff like that. We'll have to see how the community comes up with ways to use Copilot, which is a very nice feature indeed. Also in this update, we've been given some new features for filtering the games and apps menu. You can now filter by Xbox One and Xbox 360 games. Uh, all the same stuff as usual, changing the tile sizes and all storage as well. You can flip between your internal storage and your external storage as such. Um, but also, we now have a Beam app for Xbox One, so let's take a quick look at that. Now, the Beam app for Xbox One is definitively a work in progress. It's a bit laggy right now on Xbox One, I find personally. And also, the navigation isn't as good as it could be. But the updates are coming in thick and fast, so it shouldn't be long until this becomes a true Twitch competitor on the console. Now, here's an example of what a Beam stream looks like. Uh, as you can see here, we've got the main feed over here. You can change... The, the quality, you can change the full screen and you can also adjust the volume. You can even open an interaction menu which lets you uh, play sound effects in the person's stream. That's one of the cool features about Beam is the fact that you do get these interactivity opportunities and also the, the latency between the stream and the viewer is very, very low compared to other services. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit laggy, but it does work very well. Optimizations are always ongoing, of course, and Beam has been updated very rapidly since Microsoft picked it up over the summer. Uh, you can use the on-screen keyboard. You can also use the chat pad to jump in the chat. And it is quite intuitive to navigate with the controller, I must say. So yeah, that was pretty much all the major features in the new Xbox One creators update, which is rolling out now in waves to public Xbox One users. There are more features to come on this wave, actually, including custom gamer picks and that sort of stuff. Stay tuned to Windows Central for all the latest and greatest information on the Xbox One Insider program. And I've been Jez Corden, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.